What's good, YouTube fam? It's Zombie Tiller back with another video. And um, today we're going to be reacting to why rappers are afraid of K-Dot, a.k.a. Or not a.k.a. Kendrick Lamar, you know what I'm saying? Um, without further ado, let's get straight to it. Let's not waste time. Is terrifying to his fellow rappers, not just in the wake of his recent activity, but long before he was ever as battle tested as he is now. At the minute, hip hop is basking in the landscape where he destroyed Drake so savagely that his name is now being used as an acronym to warn others. So, I'm rap against Kendrick ever. ever. Yeah, you didn't sit home with the fucking Blackberry or the bum composition book and write acronyms. For your own fucking neck! And while Drake's defeat at K-Dot's hands has proven exactly why so few have gone at Kendrick over the years, what is it that makes his reputation so fierce in the first place? Well, there's actually a variety of factors that made it clear to the whole world that Kendrick wasn't a man to trifle with. My name is Luesta, and this is why rappers are scared of Kendrick Lamar. There's a lot of angles to tackle why- And yo, shout out to Loesta. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to mess up his name. But uh, I hope it's not a lag in this video. It's 20 minutes long, so hopefully we can get through without a lag. Drake has such a reputation for being one of the MCs that you just don't attempt to rhyme against. But one of the main reasons is that the reverence that the culture has for him trickles down to the top of the industry. Co-signed by Dr. Dre and passed the torch to the West Coast by Snoop Dogg, The Game, Corrupt, and every other OG you can think of. I'm just saying this, I'm a big miss. Nigga, you got the torch, nigga, you better rock. Even the legendary Eminem once thought that his pen game couldn't possibly live up to the hype. The thing with him was crazy to me. He kicks everybody out the studio. I, I took it as him kicking everybody out to see if that's really you writing the raps. <laughs> oh, that's your oh, writing. Oh, man. Oh, man. With Eminem known to be upset at rappers who use ghostwriters, that's a pretty fair assumption. But as Ed Sheeran remembered, he soon found out exactly why k -Dot was given so many props by people that he respected. Eminem. Now, Eminem kicking people out of the studio. That's a story. That's crazy in itself. You know what I'm saying? Imagine you show up. A lot of rappers like to show up like 10 deep to the studio. So for him to just have the power to just kick, that shows just that shows how people respect them. Because a lot of people, they ain't getting out no matter what you say. Hey, listen. It's either we all going to be in here to catch a vibe or we ain't doing it, but they respect Eminem so much that they leave. I heard that Kendrick Lamar was the best rapper, and he invited him to the studio to get get him on a song, and he arrived, and Kendrick came with all his mates, and uh, Eminem said, um, I just want you in the studio, just you on your own, and then my engineer's going to come in and then record you doing it, but your mates aren't allowed in, and then Kendrick did it, wrote a sick verse, and then all, everyone came in to listen to it, and Eminem said he did it to test Kendrick because he thought he had a ghostwriter and he then realized that he didn't and then claimed that he was the best. Ever since the two of them collaborated on Love Game off the Marshall Mathers LP2, Eminem has known that Lamar is among the elites in the game. And in a rare show of vulnerability from Shady, he suggested that he would think twice about coming for Kendrick. It's the same thing if I get on a, getting on the track with Kendrick. I can never tell what the fuck he's gonna do. Right. Because he's <laughs> such a chameleon of styles that he can fucking do any, pretty much anything, right? right. And, he's, and he's so proficient at it. He's so good at it. That's a fact. You don't know what you're going to get. That's a fact. That to me is like a top tier lyricist because it's like, you don't... You can get your ass kicked any day. Besides overshadowing <laughs> rappers on features, K-Dot never had to square off with other... M Listen, K-Dot would literally... K-Dot can switch up his tones and all the ad libs in the background. Bomb, bomb. Amazing brother, like you know what I'm saying. He can he can just change his voice so much to the fact that he can just hop on any track. Like literally, it don't matter if it's a old rock and roll song. It don't matter if it's a modern day R and B song. He can hop on it, bro, because he can just switch up his style so much. But he's so lyrical to the point and creative to the point where it is just fit right in, like his his style. In the same way that Shady had to in his career. But he always insisted that he had it in him to tear a rapper to shreds, even after he became a mainstream star. His entire Section 80 campaign basically revolved around the claim that he would kill your favorite rapper. Then, on Damn's Element, he issued a warning that all they had to do was say his name and they'll see Candyman. Then, after winning a Pulitzer Prize, he let his colleagues know what time it was on Rich Spirit, where he told them to stop playing with him before he turns you into a song. Stop playing with me before I turn you into a song. 
Now, Stop in the wake of Aubrey's demolition you. and J. Cole waving the white flag, we know that wasn't an idle threat as over these past few weeks, he's left massive footprints on their legacies. As they struggle to pick themselves back up, you can imagine that no one will be stepping to Dot anytime Count me soon. Out. But long before everything that followed Kendrick's declaration of fuck the big three, it's just big me went down, rappers already showed a real reluctance to cross him. In fact, when they let their ego get in the way and spoke out against him, they usually decided to pay homage instead. Because although he had never really been in a battle until Drake thought he could take him on, he already proved how much his presence and the chatter around your career can do with Big Sean. Hey, In many hey, ways, that's... Big Sean is pretty much the... No, I ain't gonna lie, though. I ain't gonna lie. I've been hearing that Drake slick didn't like K-Dot since 2014. Let me know if that's facts in the comment section. Uh, in the comment section. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's just... I've been hearing things. Let me know if you got any videos that can link to that. I've seen some stuff, but let me know if you got some solid, some solid facts, some reactions we can get into. And why Kendrick is going at Drake in the first place. By now, we all know about K-Dot's infamous verse on Control, where he hijacked Big Sean's track to let the whole industry know that even though he had love for them, he was trying to murder them and take their fans. At the same time, Big Sean insisted that he didn't even get bodied on the track, even though he opted to leave it off his Hall of Fame album that it was originally intended to be on. But he never really managed to escape its shadow. I put that work in. Like, you're not gonna disrespect me. I, I hop on any track with anybody, and I will not only stay on my own, you're going to know that it's my verse, and you're going to know I'm... That's what I'm going to do. Except for control. Kendrick Washington. <laughs> control. No, stop it. Charlamagne. Come on now. Come on. How long ago is that? What year is this? Is that where you're at? Bro, Charlamagne is messy, dog. He's messy. You got baby, you okay, right. okay. Right. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. And I still don't feel like I got washed anyway. Now nah, you got washed off the Whatever. <laughs> Your opinion, <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. You can't, you you can't focus watch. on people's opinions. You right. know why? Because that's going to throw no you off. Although he never fully accepted that there was beef, Big Sean did attempt to throw subliminal shots at Dot from time to time. For example, on songs like Me, Myself, and I, and No More Interviews, people felt like the Detroit rapper was aiming at Kendrick's rapping style. But as is often the case, Kendrick never even acknowledged that anything was going down. Down. Then, on the hard part four, he let the world know that he heard what was being said, and that if he kept pushing, Big Sean would get what he thought he wanted. Oh. My fans can't wait for me to sign your punk ass and crush your whole little shit. I'll be pawn your punk ass, you a scared little bitch. Mm. Well, he never got a formal diss track. <laughs> I like how he said the, the hard part four, but the, the clip that he showed was from the hard part five. But hey, I get what he, you know, it's just a reference. I get it, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't gonna lie, that 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 beat that he just on the heart part four, I think he used that uh, also on Damn album. Uh, if I could smoke fear away, I think it's fear. Yeah. <laughs> dedicated to him, Big Sean was informed in no uncertain terms that Kendrick would come at his neck whenever he wanted to. Meanwhile, the control situation left such a permanent imprint on Big Sean's career that you can almost divide it between the time before that verse and everything that happened after. And in a move that has really set the tone for how people come out of the other side of squabbling with Kendrick, Big Sean speaks of him with nothing but admiration now and basically acts as if there was never a problem in the first place. The Okay, Fred, oh, time to find our add. perfect apartment on Zillow. No. Don't worry, change will be good. The whole Ken, Big, Big Sean Kendrick beef was going on. It was something I wish I would have spoke up about because there was nothing. So then I remember going online and seeing like, oh, is he talking about Kendrick? Because I'm talking about people who rap fast. I wasn't beefing with nobody. Insisting that he didn't want any problems, Big Sean still had to acknowledge that the whole thing has haunted him for years. And in every verse I do, people would be like, oh, is this a response? Is this a response? And I'm like, it's like, damn, I can't even show no aggression. People think it's a damn response. It got to a point where somehow it was just a weird tension between me and him, even though it was already said it wasn't no beef because people made it that way, right? Although Big Sean probably got the raw end of the deal out of control, there was another man on the track who goes by the name of Jay Electronica. And although he was regarded as one of the world's greatest MCs at the time, he didn't escape unscathed either. Basically, Jay Elect didn't appreciate the fact that people were saying Kendrick beat him on the track. In fact, he said that Dot was envious of him. Kendrick, what part of you? Look, you couldn't pay Kendrick huh? a million dollars. Kendrick wouldn't tell you. Kendrick could tell you himself he couldn't body me. Kendrick, look, Kendrick is my son. 
Kendrick is my baby. Kendrick wishes that he could be me. Followed up was his verse on The Curse of Mayweather, where he rapped. He got 11 Grammy nominations. Y'all not equal. Man, fuck these white people. Which refers to the amount of Grammys Kendrick won at the time. He followed it up with, My grandmother died at 82 scrubbing floors. And rappers still running around begging for awards. j Lake looked like he was practically begging for problems. Then, from out of nowhere, he seemed to have a change of heart and was giving Dot his flowers all of a sudden. Last... No, I'm not gonna lie. Either that's just getting sucked into public uh, perspective, perception. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to where I'm trying to go with this, but it seemed like he got sucked into what everybody else was saying that he didn't focus on the work itself. So then he started taking out something that probably was taking out his aggression on K Dot when he probably didn't even have aggression towards him. But the public kind of sway him that way. I don't know. Maybe he did. This rap industry, I'm not in it, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Any industry you get into is always gonna be something. You gotta watch your you gotta watch your back. He's the kid on TDE Everything. because regardless to whom or what, we're brothers fighting the same energy. Forgive my past energy. Although it's unclear what made him switch up like that, Jay, like many rappers we're going to discuss, was another man who folded on Dot when he was put to the test. For the most part, hip hop's response to Kendrick's name drops on control not only laid the groundwork for the Drake beef, but it also set the precedent for how rappers would tiptoe around him. At the time, there were tons of responses to control, but they all seemed like they were carefully towing the line as to not go too far. For example, I after feeling anger that Slaughterhouse were left out of the shoutouts, one of the group's members, Joel Ortiz, responded with the vicious track titled Out of Control, where he let Kendrick have it. I mean, you the king of New York, little homie, you ain't the king of New York, you the next thing on my floor. But later on, he would do an interview with Vibe and say that he was actually saluting Kendrick for the most part. As for the notoriously fearless Joe Budden, he was hosting a live stream for the response track only to opt out and not release it. Amid That's responses weird. from That's Blues weird. and others, That's Kendrick weird. remained so calm about the whole thing that no it would be impossible for it to not strike weird. fear in their hearts. How are you feeling about uh, all, the, um, all the comebacks lately from your uh, control verse? So when they all backed down, it really made the whole culture realize that Lamar was to be treated with respect. Basically, there's always a caveat when it comes to KDOT slander, rather than anyone really coming for his neck. I mean, just look at what happened to French Montana when he attempted to diss him. Over the years, French has had a few things to say about Kendrick. First off, he claimed that he was being pushed by the industry. Why you think Kendrick sells more than like street rappers? Um, cause they, cause they position him like how they did in the Grammys, as, as, as the new music. But I don't feel like that's, you know, it's not, not, it's not that it's not the right thing to do, but I just feel like they, you see, it was like the whole thing was like Kendrick Knight. Then, more ridiculous. Now, that's pure hating. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care. Friends probably can look at it how he want to look at it, but that's just hating, bro. You know, he might have, that might be how he feel, but I feel like it's coming out of hate. You know, it is what it is. It's either you with it or you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to k Dot, shout out to French. But uh, it's either you with it or you ain't, you know? I mean, it's no different than what Drake said on his songs. Kendrick just opened his mouth, somebody come give him a Grammy. That's hate. You know what I'm saying? The man worked hard for his Grammys. It is what it is. <laughs> He said that he had more hits than him, only to be clowned relentlessly by the internet. If we just talking about anthems, me versus Kendrick hit for hit, I believe I can go neck to neck. I've been making hits for a long time. I love Kendrick. That's not just for Kendrick. That's for anybody they put in front of me. However, You're supposed to feel that not way, everyone agreed with this. I mean, You're even other rappers that hopped on the bandwagon to mock him for it. Stupid ass nigga said he got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> But while he had smoke for Thug and engaged in a war of words with him over it, French Montana never tried to provoke K-Dot any further. And now, just like everyone else, French has since basically apologized for even thinking he could mess with him and said he was just in his feelings at the time. I was just heated I ain't win a Grammy for, for Unforgettable. That's what it was? Yeah, but Kendrick is my dog. But just, th just that one. I knew it. I knew it. The man worked hard for his Grammy, bro. Not saying you didn't work hard, French. And I'm glad you grew to understand to understand uh, where those where those emotions were coming from. Because a lot of people don't. One one day at the interview, 
I was just so heated that I ain't win, and he was the winner. And I was just like, yo, but I fuck with Kendrick. I fuck, I fuck with the whole um, with the whole team. Opting to say that he was in the wrong rather than say Kendrick had any part in it. This is a rare show of humility for a rapper. And while Cole has been taking all the flack for getting I up agree. on the Dreamville Festival stage and saying that his seven minute drill diss song towards Kendrick didn't sit right with his spirit and would be deleted off streaming services. When I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel that shit did. Another it's hard ad. to believe that no, will get no, any no. better, but really, all it takes is a hey, little Hey, Liz, shout out to, shout out to the ads, though. Oh, shout out to the man. ads. Shout out to the ads. Disrupts my fucking peace. History shows that he's not the first person to make his apologies to Kendrick. And maybe fear of being dismantled on a verse wasn't the only reason. Although his immense talents on the mic are one major factor, Rich, Rich extending his love to Kendrick's whole team is important. Because as these rappers likely learned before going at his neck, messing with Kendrick requires you to go up against an army. And while Kendrick might have been a good kid in a mad city, he's got a whole city behind him. And there's something dangerous about Kendrick that not a lot of people speak about. Growing up in Compton, Kendrick was exposed to the gang lifestyle early on, and many of his best friends were active members. Then, after joining TDE, he suddenly found himself in the midst of the Bounty Hunter Bloods and Hoover Crips as he teamed up with fellow label mates Schoolboy Q and J-Rock as well as a whole host of other people who were repping sets. Recently, Kendrick's gang ties have come under the microscope again. Because if the rumors are true, Cole might have received a tip to back off from the beef that sounds not too dissimilar to what you'd see on the streets from Schoolboy Q. Reporting from Dreamville Festival, an unnamed source revealed that it was actually Schoolboy Q who allegedly warned J. Cole to stop beefing with Kendrick before the apology. I'm not specifying what kind of warning, whether it was a bullying move, a Debo-like maneuver, or just a friendly heads up. I don't think it matters at this point. Plane. But based on what Munch, TDE's president, said, I think they gave him what he needed to hear to bow out of the battle with as much... But see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Even when you say stuff like that, it can paint pictures that's not there. You know, people can start speculating. So even when you put that out there, you breathe that into the, into the world... The Bible says it's like prophesying to the wind. You know what I'm saying? So even if you're speaking that, now if I'm watching this video, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it was some street, even though it probably wasn't. You know what I'm saying? But I understand what, I don't understand as possible. Whether he was letting him know what kind of heat KDOT had in store for Drake with the abuse allegations, or telling him to ease up before things got dangerous, this whole situation proves that whatever Kendrick is getting involved in, the streets he grew up on have his back. In terms of gangs, Kendrick has long been rumored to have connections to the West Side High Route. In addition to his affiliation to the Red Side of the city, Kendrick also has uncles who are Crips, several of which have served a lengthy jail terms for gang-related activity and armed robbery, and he's still locked in with them to this very day. Does the crew come out every time you come to Compton? Yeah. <laughs> as a result of his connections, as well as old pictures of Kendrick dressed in red, Drake's recent assessment that he isn't affiliated to a set on his new track, Family Matters, has been ridiculed by people from Compton. While at the same time, respecting Kendrick's desire to withhold that from becoming a big part of his identity. Drake says you don't bang a set. And he says the game bangs a set, even Chris Brown bangs a set. He just don't know Kendrick. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, has Kendrick renounced his hood affiliation at some point? Kendrick just don't be private and so like priding himself off of his gang culture. So I guess people think that he a non affiliate. I don't know if we posted, it, but you know, hey. But obviously, like the yeah, the fact is Kendrick severely the, downplays gang affiliation. The push ups was in yeah. his hood, wasn't they? The push ups that you know. talk about they had the part. Once again, the clues for Cali having his back have all been there in the music. On Section 80's Poe Man Dreams, Kendrick has a line where he says, City got my back before that, I give them my torso. You think about it. Basically, what he's saying here is that he can say things with his chest because he knows that he has the city behind him. And when you look close at those videos of Not Like Us going off in the club, he should- You gotta remember though, Kendrick is also an Israelite. So it's not just his city that he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? City of Angels. I definitely feel more confident in that than ever. Step. But while this could be taken literally for the whole state of California, that line may contain allusions to his gang ties. In an interview from back in the day, Snoop Dogg went into more detail about this. It's just that he's, he's a nice guy. 
to solve and have a problem with because he doesn't have a gangster approach. But let me let y'all know, he got a hundred thousand motherfucking gangsters with him. So y'all better watch what y'all say. You understand what I'm saying? Keep it hip hop because that's what he did. He did it all hip hop. In spite of the fact that Kendrick hasn't ever definitively said he was a gangbanger, what we do know is that there are times in his life where he moved like one. Back in the day, Dot tried to intimidate AD of the No Jumper podcast and back on Facebook. No, I'm not gonna lie. In this part of the video, I might have to end it right here because now we stepping into grounds that uh, I'm not really trying to step into. You know what I'm saying? They talking about gang ties and all of this. I mean, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, Kendrick is not on that, you know what I'm saying? He's not, that's not what he's about. Um, from what I hear in his music and from what he, the energy and the spirit that he gives off, you know? So I'm not saying that that ain't his family and that ain't where he's from and that ain't where he show love to, that ain't his community, you know? But this picture that's being painted right here, no disrespect to homie who made this video, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but for me personally, you know what I'm saying? It don't really matter whether he's gang affiliated or not to me, you know what I'm saying? As a man. Uh, but hey, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what else he about to get into in this video. Uh, wait, what's this right here? I kind of want to zoom past all this gang stuff. I'm not going to lie. Lemonade. And we got here with an ad. Three. So if you want to check out the rest of that video, let me know. If you want me to even finish this video, I can re I think it's like five and a half minutes left. Let me know if you want to do it. Want me to do a part two? But I'm I'm gonna end this one right here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to touch on that all that other stuff. Let me know what else you want me to react to in the comment section below. And um, this has been why rappers are afraid of Kendrick Lamar. Now I understand he had to touch on the gang stuff, but uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.